Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about FDA meetings uh, in the drug development process. So I'm going to talk about what are the different types of FDA meetings, uh, what is the importance to have the meetings with the FDA uh, by sponsors or the applicants, and also I'm going to talk about what is the meeting package and what are its contents and how how the, 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 the documentation should be done uh, for FDA meetings. Each year, FDA review staff, they participate in many meetings with the sponsors or applicants who seek guidance relating to the development and the review of investigational new drugs and biologics and, 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 and drug or a biological product marketing applications. Okay, because these meetings often represent critical points in the regulatory process it is important that there are efficient, consistent procedures for the timely and effective conduct of these meetings. So uh, why there is a need to have these FDA meetings during the drug, drug development process? Uh, because uh, having the formal meetings with the FDA, they actually have huge impact in the drug development process. For example, one data shown here shows that having pre-IND meetings with pre and meetings, the time taken for the drug development is uh, 7.1 years, whereas without having pre-IND in, in meeting, the time taken for the drug development is 12.8 years. As you can see that, there is a difference of 5.7 years. Therefore, it is important to have meeting with the FDA. And not only this, uh, with in, end of uh, phase two meeting, for example, with end of phase two meeting, the time taken for the uh, drug development is 9.6 years, but without end of phase two meeting, the time taken for the drug development is 11.3 years. There is a difference for of 1.7 years. So the FDA, the meetings with the FDA, they can expedite the drug development process. Therefore, it's important to have those meetings with the authorities from the FDA. So then, uh, what are the different types of FDA meetings? There are basically three types of FDA meeting. Uh, one is type A, another one is type B, and the another one is type C. And each meeting type is subject to different procedures, okay? So now I'm going to talk about what is type A meeting. So the type A meeting, a uh, type A meeting is a meeting needed to help an otherwise stalled, okay, stalled pro product uh, development process. When the product, there is a stalled stall, stall, stall product development process, then uh, a meeting is needed. And so what kind of uh, uh, situations in which uh, uh, it is important to have FDA meeting is, for example, in case of dispute resolution meetings, so the examples of such meetings are dispute, dispute resolution meetings as described in 21 CFR 10.75, 312.48, and 314.103. And in the guidance for industry formal dispute resolution, appeals above the division level. FA, another, another example of type A meetings, uh, also includes meeting to discuss clinical holds in which a response to hold issues has been submitted, but uh, the FDA and the sponsor or the applicant agree that the development is stalled and a new pathway forward should be discussed. And another situation in which this kind of meeting is uh, needed is uh, for special protocol assessment meetings uh, that are requested by the sponsors or the applicants after the receipt of FDA evaluation of protocols under the special protocol assessment procedures as described in the guidance for industry special protocol assessment. So in these kind of situations, uh, it is important to have type A meeting with the FDA. So uh, the type A meeting should be scheduled to occur within the 30 days of FDA receipt, uh, uh, receipt of written meeting request. Okay, so after submitting the uh, written meeting meeting request uh, to the FDA uh, for type A meeting, and this meeting should happen uh, within 30 days. And if there are changes, and if a sponsor or the applicant requests for a meeting date that is beyond 30 days from the date of the request, then the FDA will work with the sponsor or the applicants to determine the earliest agreeable date. But generally, so they should be scheduled to occur within 30 days of the FDA receipt of a written meeting request from the sponsor or the applicant. So another type of meeting is 
type B meeting. So in which, for example, in which like, cases this meeting is 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 required. For example, uh, for free investigational new drug application pre IND meetings, 21 CFR 312.82. Certain end of phase one meetings, 21 CFR 312.82. End of phase two and pre phase three meetings, for that's according to 21 CFR 312.47. Uh, Pre-new drug application or biologics license applications meetings, that is 21 CFR 312.47. So these type B meeting requests should be scheduled to occur within 60 days of FDA receipt of written meeting request from the sponsor or the applicant. Okay, they should occur within 60 days. Uh, so the type C meeting, so what kind of meetings are type C meetings? Type C meetings are any other meeting than type A or type B uh, between a uh, Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research, CIVR, or Center for Drugs Evaluation and Re Research, CIDR, and a sponsor or the applicant regarding the development and a review of a product. Type C meetings uh, should be scheduled to occur within 75 days of FDA receipt of the written meeting request. So uh, meeting requests by sponsors or the, uh, or the applicants before seeking a meeting meeting request with the uh, CIVR or CIDR, sponsors or the applicants should consider other sources of in inputs applicable to their product development program, uh, such as FDA and International Conference on Harmonization Guidances, okay? but. Even after going through this, if the meeting is needed, then the meeting request sh sh should be made and that meeting request should include the following information. Product name, application number, chemical name and structure, pr pr proposed indications or the context of product development, type of meeting being requested, type A, type B or type C, brief statement of purpose and objectives of the meeting, this in statement should include brief background of the issues underlying the agenda. It can also contain a brief summary of completed or planned studies and clinical trials and the data the sponsor or applicant needs to discuss at the meeting. The general nature of the critical questions to be asked and where the meeting fits in overall development plans. Although statements should not provide detailed documentation of trial designs or completed studies, and clinical trials, it should provide enough information to facilitate the understanding of the issues, such as small table that summarizes measure results. A proposed agenda, a list of proposed questions grouped by discipline. For each question, there should be a brief explanation of the contest and the purpose of question. A list of all individuals with their titles and affiliations who will attend the requested meeting from the sponsors or the applicant's organization and cons consultants, a list of FDA staff, if known, or disciplines uh, asked to participate in the requested meeting, suggested dates and times, for example, morning or afternoon for the meeting uh, that are within or beyond the appropriate time frame of the meeting time being requested, the format of the meeting, it can be face-to-face -face, face -face meeting, teleconference, or video conference. So the FDA meeting request should include all this information. Okay. So now moving to the next point, after getting the meeting request, FDA uh, will assess the meeting request. And so basically the CIVR or CIDR division director or the designee who receives the meeting request will determine whether or not to hold the meeting and will, will respond to the sponsor or the applicant by granting or denying the meeting within the 14 days of the receipt of the request for type A meetings and within 21 days for type B and type C meetings, okay? So that means in one case, the meeting can be denied if a meeting is the meeting request is denied and this uh, notification to the sponsor or applic applicant will be provided, which will include an explanation of the reason for the denial Denials will be based on substantive reason, not merely on the absence of a minor element of the meeting request or meet, meeting package items. For example, a meeting can be denied because it is uh, premature for, for, for the stage of the product development. A subsequent request to, this, uh, to schedule the meeting will be considered 
is a new request. Request that merits a new set of time frames as described in section third. So meeting if the meeting is granted, if the, re, if the meeting request is granted, that means Siver or Cedar will notify the sponsor or the applicant of the decision and schedule the meeting by determining the meeting type, date, time, length, place, and contains non-binding recommendations. Um, so, and also it will include expected um, um, FDA participants, okay? So then meeting package and submission. So then, uh, so after this, uh, if the meeting is, is accepted, meeting is granted, then the applicant or the uh, applicant or the sponsor, they will prepare the meeting package. So the me preparing the meeting package should help the sponsor or the applicant focus on describing its principal areas of the interest. Not only the package is prepared, this package should uh, also provide the information relating, uh, uh, relevant to the discussion tof topics and enable the FDA to prepare adequately for the meeting. So it's, it's both, it's for the preparation of the of the sponsor or the applicant also, and also for the uh, preparation, uh, it, will, it, will, it will help uh, prepare FDA uh, to respond adequately. Okay, so that, that, that is the importance of having this meeting package. Not only this meeting package, uh, should be prepared, but it should be submitted on time uh, for uh, to ensure that uh, that there is sufficient time for the meeting preparation, accommodating adjustment to the meeting agenda, accommodating appropriate pre-meeting communication. So timing of the submission, for example, if it is a type A meeting, this meeting package uh, should be submitted at least two weeks before the formal meeting. If this is a type B meeting, then it should be submitted at least four weeks uh, before the formal meeting. For the type C meeting, uh, the meeting package should be submitted at least four weeks before the formal meeting, okay? So then next question is then where and how many copies of this meeting package uh, should be sent? Meeting package uh, should be submitted to the appropriate review division. The number of copies of the, uh, the, the package will vary based on the meeting uh, the responsible point of the contact in the review division will advise on the number of copies needed for the attendees. Next is then what this meeting package uh, should contain. What are the contents of this package? The meeting package should provide the summary of information related to the product and any supplementary information needed to develop responses to issues raised by sponsor or applicant or review division. Full study and trial reports or detailed data are generally not appropriate for meeting packages. The summarized material should describe the decisions and the results of relevant studies and clinical trials with some degree of quantification. The trial endpoints should be stated, as should be uh, should whether endpoints were altered or analysis changed. Okay, so then. Uh, the contents of the meeting package, it should include product name and application number, if applicable, chemical name and structure, pur purpose indication, dosage form, route of administration, dosing regimen, operator list of sponsor or, or applicant attendees, affiliations and titles, background sections that includes the following information, a brief history of the development program and the events leading up to the meeting, the status of the product development, the target indication for use, a brief statement summarizing the purpose of the meeting, a proposed agenda, a list of final questions for the discussion grouped by the discipline, and with a brief summary for each question to explain the need or context for the question. And the data uh, to support uh, discussion um, organized by discipline and question. For example, an end of phase two meeting, this section should include the following, if not already provided. Uh, in, the, in the background section, a description and results of the controlled trials conducted to determine dose response information, adequately detailed descriptors of planned phase three trials, identifying major trials, trial features such as trial population, critical expulsions, trial design, that includes randomization, blinding, choice of control group, 
with explanation of the basis for any non-inferiority margin if a non-inferiority trial is used, choice of dose, primary and secondary trial endpoints, major analysis, including plant interim analysis, and adaptive features and major safety concerns. So this should be the content of the trial package, uh, sorry, the meeting package. Meeting package contains, so Cedar and Cedar hold internal meeting to discuss meeting packages and to gain internal agreement on the preliminary responses to sponsors or applicants' questions, because meeting packets will also contain questions. Therefore, a receiver or seeder of the FDA, they will hold internal meeting to discuss the meeting packages and to gain internal agreement on the preliminary responses to sponsors or applicant questions. FDA may communicate these preliminary responses to the sponsor or the applicant. They may or they may not. Communications before the meeting between the sponsors or the applicants and the FDA Includes, including preliminary responses, can serve as a foundation for the discussion or can be or can be the final meeting responses. Nevertheless, pre-meeting communication should not be a taken as final unless there is agreement between sponsor or the applicant and the F and then the FDA that the additional discussion is not necessary. Okay, so then finally the documentation of the meeting, the documentation of the meeting outcomes, agreements, disagreements, and action items is critical to ensuring that this information is preserved for meeting uh, attendees and, and for future references. FDA minutes are the official record of the meeting and the official finalized minutes will be issued to all FDA attendees and to the sponsor or the applicant within 30 days of the meetings if there are any differences between the FDA and the applicant or the sponsor, then these disputes are also resolved. I hope this video was helpful in understanding different FDA meetings. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.